Ashutosh, yes. He's going to talk to us about structure and function correlation in glaucoma. Very important topic, and I'm sure he's going to do good justice. To good morning. Topic. A very basic talk, especially for the general ophthalmologist. So what are the practical pearls when you think about structural and functional correlation? You need to have a proper disk evaluation, need to correlate that structural defect, suspected defect with the OCT, and then correlate it functionally with the Humphrey visual field. So structural and functional correlation forms the cornerstone in the diagnosis of glaucoma. When you see disk evaluation, you need to evaluate the disk in these following seven parameters. One is most important is you need to make a forceful decision as to what is the size of the disk you are seeing. If you see this disk on the screen on the left with the spot size of 1.5 millimeters, you see a small disk and on the other side, you see a large disk compared to that 1.5 million, 1.5 millimeter <laughs> diameter. The optic disk cup, we all know this is the standard, the cup disk ratio vertical is more important and then you need to look out for cup disk asymmetry. When you see these three disks here, one on the left is the small disk, one on the center is the normal disk and one on the right is the large disk. What is it that you are seeing that the cupping is different in all the three normal disks? So the lesson, cup disk ratio varies with the size of the disk and cup disk ratio on its own is not significant. Then a large cup can be normal for a large disk and a small cup abnormal for a small disk. So importance varies with the disc size. Hence, the moment you look at the disc with a 90D lens in your chambers, always make a forceful decision as to what is the size of the disc you are looking at. What is important? That optic is, is only a surrogate for the neuroretinal rim. And when you say neuroretinal rim, you need to see whether it is pink, pale, or notching is there. And the important thing is you need to see for the so-called isn't rule that the inferior rim should be thicker than the superior, which should be thicker than the uh, nasal, and the, then that should be thicker than the temporal. So you need to look out for any vascular changes. These are theoretical, like new nasal shift of the vessels, bearing of the vessel, and the bionetting of the vessel. And always rule out the presence of a hemorrhage. Look out for a hemorrhage and make sure that there is no hemorrhage. The nerve fiber layer defect, it is a dark wedge, touches the disc and then fans out into the periphery. You see a small hemorrhage there, and as a result of that, you see this nerve fiber layer defect, which can be seen better with a red free light. The peripapillary atrophy and the coronary retinal degeneration also should be uh, seen and taken into consideration when you are evaluating the disc structurally. Then you need to correlate disc with an OCT. Here I am taking the help of an OptiView OCT. The main aim of the image processing is to measure the RNFL thickness, optic disc rim, and cup. And then the ganglion cell complex is a vital component of this uh, uh, machine. And also with this we can measure the CCT and look out for the angle scan. This is a normal OCT when we see all these parameters because of the positive prime, I can't explain every component. Then you need to correlate this structural defect with a functional change in the Humphrey field analyzer. And when you analyze an o pe pe perimeter printout, you need to see and interpret in the following eight uh, points. And in one slide, if you ask me to tell you about visual field. If you see on the left, if there is a diffuse suppression in total deviation with all points being normal in pattern deviation, that may be a cataract. If you see the total deviation and pattern deviation similar, there can be glaucoma. And if you see the total deviation totally suppressed, and when you remove the diffuse component of suppression from the total deviation, what stands out in the pattern deviation is the glaucoma. So probably cataract and glaucoma. With this, let's move on to structurally and functionally correlate. Here you see a large disc with a 0.75 cup with a normal visual field. Here if you see the inferior temporal notch that forms a early uh, defect in the superior nasal step. Here you see uh, this excavation of the superior uh, rim which translates into an inferior arcuate defect. Here if you see, Concentrate not on the color cupping, concentrate on the dipping of the vessels. It is near total cup results in a field like this. And if you detect this kind of a situation, always correlate with a 10-2 for follow-up. And now if you see, always look out for pallor of the temporal pallor, especially you won't be surprised if you get a hemianopic component, and this is the other point. Now, correlation with the, uh, this thing, correlation with the OCT, 
If you see this disc, there is an inferior temporal notch. You see a clear cut nerve fiber layer defect. And then if you see the OCT, it, there is an inferior temporal uh, defect here, significant defect. If you see the GCC correlating perfectly, and if you see there is a superior arcuate suppression with a focal defect in the nasal step. This is exactly what a structural and functional correlation needs to be looked at. And if you see this disc, there is definitely an inferior excavation here. You see the dipping of the vessel here. If you correlate with the OCT, you also see a superior temporal defect as well as an inferior um, um, uh, defect on the OCT, and that perfectly correlates with a superior arcuate defect and the focal defect in the, inf the inferior nasal step. And if you see this here, you always look out for hemorrhage. Now this hemorrhage was there and the visual field was normal. And you need to concentrate and treat this patient, bring down the pressures to the optimum level because if you see the field on the right side, if despite maintaining thing, you are now slowly detecting a focal glaucomatous defect in the inferior nasal step. Now, I would like to conclude by showing you this. This was the OCT where this was my learning curve in OCT, my first learning thing. I took this, the, I subjected this patient to OCT only for the intraocular pressure variation between the two eyes. And now what do we see? Normal visual fields. But if you see the OCT, the left eye, or the right eye shows a superior temporal and inferior temporal defect. Then you go back, look at carefully, then I started seeing, oh, is there some nerve fiber layer defect here? Here, something like that. I put the patient on treatment. Then I read about the GCC. This was my initial experience with the OCT. So I called back the patient. I did the, GC, the, the uh, GCC. Then everything is normal. The right eye, the nerve fiber layer is normal. Go back and see. In April, I had a superior temporal and inferior temporal defect, which is now vanished. What is the reason? If you see the centering, the man behind the machine, if you see here, it is eccentric. That is the reason why a peripheral area was checked and that gave the thing. Now this is a perfectly centered uh, OCT with a normal retinal nerve fiber layer. What is the lesson that we get to know about this? Imaging technologies do not confirm diagnosis by themselves. Imaging technologies at best only complement the clinical judgment of the glaucomatologist and structural and functional correlation by stereo photographs and visual fields is a vital tool. A good collaboration with the relevant imaging technology does act as a bonus. So the cornerstone of glaucoma diagnosis, structural and functional correlation, the way suspected a defect in the optic disc as a first step, further evaluate the patient, if necessary, correlate with the OCT. Once you establish a structural defect, this defect needs to be correlated functionally with the Humphrey visual field, and then and then only you will be diagnosing that case as a glaucoma. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Manoj, sir. Indeed, it was a beautiful correlation of the structure and function. So uh, with that, we invite our next speaker,